Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today it's time for another update on the water box tank. The most obvious update is the tank now has sand, which obviously it didn't have sand in before, so I'll show you that. Uh, there's a couple of MP40s and actually I suppose the most obvious update really is I got a couple of new additions which I'll show you properly in a minute. But uh, things are progressing nicely. I don't like to progress too quickly in the first month with, of a new tank. So that's why I haven't had an update because nothing has really changed until the last couple of days. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an update on how the Majestic and the Blueface are doing. Um, I've even put a couple of sneaky corals in here. They're probably gonna stay. There was just more just to see if the angels took nips of them. Uh, spoiler, they do. Uh, so it's not going well so far. And I'll give you an update on the clownfish in the, um, in the coral farm as well. So the, the maroon one I got last week, which I paired up with the percular. So um, let's get on. Right, so the fish we should probably start with are how the blue face and the majestic are getting on. Uh, the blue face is obviously the boss, but it's incredibly secretive. I've never known of a fish that's so secretive. Uh, as you can see, it's got a little bit of lymphocystis at the moment. It was actually worse the other day, uh, but it's now um, it's starting to, uh, to fall off. It's, it's, it's not a problem when you see a fish with lymphocystis, it usually just goes away, away on its own, especially if it's not too bad. So um, I'm just monitoring it, and, um, but there's nothing you can really do to, um, to help it. Uh, I was a little bit concerned with regards to the size of the blue face in comparison to, as I see, the Majestic, which is quite a little bit smaller. The reason they're so active is because I put food in here. I put a cubomysis in each of these, and the reason I put them in those is so the new fish can eat first and then what happens is the uh, mitis falls through the holes and then the other fish get whatever's left over. It just allows the, as it allows the new fish to get the most of the food, firstly, and uh, secondly, it also keeps the other fish out long enough so that I can film them for you uh, because otherwise the blue face would just not be out because it's so secretive. Anyway, so at first there was a little bit of um, of chasing, tiny, tiny amount, like barely anything, never really any nipping, just chasing from the blue face to the majestic. Um, as you can see, the majestic's still in perfect condition. Um, and they just, they seem to just get on completely fine now. Now I have never had an angelfish tank before, so I wasn't sure how this was uh, was gonna work. But um, yeah, two, two have been okay. So I decided to get a couple more. Now this is a tank bred gold flake angelfish. Uh, angelfish being tank bred are pretty rare actually. So it's, uh, it's, it's probably one of the rarest fish I own considering firstly it's a gold flake and secondly it's obviously tank bred. <coughs> and the other one was one you saw just a minute ago which is this annularis. Now I have wanted an annularis for the longest time. As you can see this one is going through uh, sort of the uh, the teenager stage where it's not got its blue coloration of the juvenile markings and it hasn't got its adult colorations uh, just yet. But I w ideally I wanted an adult colored one, uh, but this one should change over the next couple of months uh, into that sort of bronze color with the, the blue stripes. There was a slight problem with this angel. You can see it's got a little bit ripped on its uh, tail fin. It's also got a little rip on its other pectoral fin, the one you can't see. And that was because it had flukes. Uh, so what I did is I, cut, I, I freshwater dipped it, it had four flukes on it, they all came off and, um, and now it's, uh, it's good, good, good to go. But it's, you can see that it's eating like a, uh, like a trooper. Going back to the gold flake, the gold flake is actually a juvenile. So it doesn't have its sort of really prominent gold flecks yet. And the other thing it doesn't have is it will eventually have blue lips. Uh, which you can just sort of see are just kind of coming through, but not quite enough yet. Now, the other two angels have showed interest in them in the box, but not too much. And the reason, uh, the other reason I like to feed them in the box is because it, it forces all the angelfish to interact with each other and get close to each other. And hopefully they will get used to each other. Now they will be in these boxes for a week. And then as usual, I will open them at midnight when it's pitch black I, w I won't get them out, I'll literally just open the gates. And then the fish can swim out when it wants. And generally speaking, usually when, th when this happens, uh, the other fish don't even notice them. Now one of the things I wanted to point out is there is an absolutely massive difference with regards to the personalities of a tank bred fish and a wild caught fish. 
So the tank bred fish is always it's like swimming up and down, doesn't ever look frightened. It's all, it's just, it's genuinely, this is all it's ever known. Whereas with the annularis, because obviously it's got, got nowhere to hide, it spends most of its time sort of in the corner. And I didn't think that there would be this much of a difference with, with those two fish. Now I didn't expect to say this, but there is quite clearly a benefit to buying tank bred fish over wild caught fish, but just because they are completely settled uh, into captivity and um, yeah and they don't seem to have that much bother with regards to um, to being here. Now unfortunately the fish food is making the tank a little bit hazy but you can see I've also got two new clownfish. Uh, these are orange storm clownfish. Now originally I was going to put the um, that really really vibrant maroon clownfish in here, uh, the one that I've, I'm trying to pair up with the other um, clownfish I've got uh, and as I said I will show you that in a minute with regards to what happened um, but I just preferred these and I'll explain why when I take you in the coral farm so the I had the female already I got her at the same time as the other maroon and or it's, it's the female now it wasn't the female at the time but I've also got this one uh, yesterday the smaller male one here and the reason I got him purely was because it looks like he has a beard. So when I put him to see, you can see there, he looks like he's got a little beard. Now when I put them together, there was a little bit of fighting at first. Uh, as you can see right there, she's a bit, she's a bit, um, a bit nippy still, uh, but they have, uh, they have actually completely settled in perfectly fine together. The funny thing was, they were both in this, in this box here with the gold flake and overnight, somehow, the male managed to get out. So I thought, well, if the male's out, then, then I'll get the female. What's happening is um, I've installed MP40s now, so these are new. And every so often when they're on full power mode, this little lid here just peeks open just for a couple of seconds, and the male must have obviously got out during that time. Right now, eagle-eyed viewers will also notice I've got a Halloween urchin in there. You'll, you'll notice that despite the fact this is the essentially the time that a tank is being cycled, at the moment, still very little on the, in, the, in terms of rock work. Um, there's, there's not a huge amount growing. I get a little bit of um, sort of bacteria or like a film growing on the glass. You might be able to see it. Yeah, I've missed this patch there, you can see. But other than that, it's like this is like the best cycle I've ever done as far as I'm concerned. Now, don't get me wrong, at any point this could completely change, and it probably will, and the ugly stage will hit, but so far so good. Now the biggest difference from an aesthetics point of view is that the tank now has sand in it. Uh, now the sand that I've gone for is, uh, I'll show you, it is Carib Sea's live sand. Now you don't need to use live sand uh, when creating a sand bed, you can use dry sand, but the most important thing is you want to use aragonite sand, and that's exactly what this is. And you also want the dimensions of that, of the, the sort of the diameters of the, each of the individual grains to be between one and two millimeters. Any more than one and two millimeters, you can get uh, detritus getting trapped and any less the sand gets blown around. So this is pretty much over the years I've found to be the perfect sand bed. You want it to be about one, between one and one and a half inches. Uh, and then you pretty much just leave it alone. I don't siphon it, I don't do anything with it, and it just, uh, it just, uh, it looks after itself basically. The reason for that is because with it being only one, between one and a, one and a half inches, you can get water flow down to the very bottom of it. So it sort of look, just maintains itself. And I will probably put a couple of Nasaris snails in there. But other than that, there's no, there's definitely no siphoning or anything like that going on, and it's just fine. At the moment, which is completely normal with new sand, you can get some diatoms uh, because um, of the silicates in the sand. But as I said, from an aesthetics point of view, it makes such a difference. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of a bare patch. That's one downside to having sand. Um, I, all I need to do is just tune the MP40 in a little bit better uh, to, um, to stop that from happening. But other than that, there's pretty much none anywhere else. And um, it just, it makes such a difference. The thing I've never heard anyone talk about with, it, with regards to this is that the sand shows off the shadows of, of your rock work, which makes an entirely different dimension. So previously, obviously, the tank base is black, 
which means you don't see any shadows. Whereas now, you can see the shadows from the rockwork, which just makes such a difference. Now while we're down here, I suppose it's probably a good time to talk about the corals that I put in. Uh, I put four different types of milliporas in. You can see they're not particularly brightly coloured at the moment. Uh, and you can also see that one of them has been removed from the plug and is now sitting down here. And that is what happens when you try to keep angelfish with corals. The blue face is definitely nipping them, but it's not nipping them to the point where it's actually destroying them. And that is what I wanted. I just wanted to test out if, if all else fails, if everything goes like terrible and they eat zoas and frog spawns, everything, can I at least have a nice millipora tank? And so far, so good. Uh, this one, these have only just come in from in Indonesia. This one's actually pink, or it's meant to be, but it doesn't look like it's doing too well at the moment. So, and it, it, it actually, it wasn't doing too well when it arrived, but I thought I'd just give it a go. The only thing I will be doing with this tank is I will be changing uh, the GHL lights. They're not changing them, but changing the settings on them. Because at the moment, they're very, very white, which is amazing for showing off the colours of the angelfish. But white light doesn't make corals pop. So all I need to do is just log into the app and change them so they're a little bit more blue. But other than that, genuinely very, very happy uh, with these. I love the spread. And that's what someone came to the house the other day and they, and they mentioned it. They went, wow, look how much of a spread you get on that. So, um, so yeah, genuinely. Remember, I've been using the same lights for 12 years now. So to have new, different lights, I was, uh, I was a little bit nervous, but genuinely pretty happy. So um, I'll keep you updated on the process of those. I've been a little bit naughty. I still haven't plumbed in the dosing pumps yet, but I will get there. I'll get there. Uh, there's no point in, in applying them at the moment, just because obviously there's no coral in here. So it's not like, well, I can't imagine that those couple of frags are going to be making much difference to the parameters. Right now I'll finish with this tank now, but I just thought I'd give you a little sort of idea what I plan to do. I'm going to be filling this fit this tank with fish first. So for now it's going to be essentially a fish only with live with live rock uh, system. I will I'm not going to put anything crazy in there, no triggers. I will probably put a couple more angels. The more I get the more I love them. They have got such great personalities. They're just very different to other fish. I saw a blue line the other day, which I actually really like. And we all know that I want uh, a regal angel and there's also a king eye, obviously in the coral farm. So I originally, this, <laughs> this project started with the idea of having just one angel fish. And, and now I've got five with the idea of um, having a sixth one as well with, in terms of a regal and possibly a seventh with regards to a blue line. But we'll see, the king eye won't go in until there is a lid on the tank because I know it jumps. Uh, the lid is currently being made by Top Lids in America. Uh, they say it will take a couple of weeks to come over, so that will obviously hopefully be here soon. And then I can move the King Eye over. And um, but I can't move the King Eye over until I've made space in the acclimation box anyway. But the King Eye is actually much bigger. It's, it's probably about a third bigger and twice as wide as the Annularis and uh, at least double, if not triple the size of the Gold Flake. So um, I don't have too much worries because I assume it will become the boss of the tank very quickly. So yeah, once the tank is full of fish, then I'll start adding corals. And um, you'll have to wish me luck. Right, as you can see, we're back in the coral farm. Now before I show you what's happened to the clownfish, uh, I thought I'd give you a little idea of what direction the farm's gonna be going in. And a lot of it's not gonna change, but I am going to be getting in some more soft corals. Now what I realized I was doing is I was buying corals to sell the, the corals essentially that I like, but that doesn't mean everyone likes them. And I have neglected a huge portion of the hobby and that's people that are essentially beginners. Um, so, <laughs> and, and look, soft corals, you can have a soft coral tank if you're not a beginner. I've started to get a little bit more love for them. So what I've done, is um, I've got a few different mushrooms I'm just going to show you at the moment. Uh, I've got a really, really bright green toadstool. I've got four of those. Uh, and I've also got a few clothes polyps and stuff like that, that I think I'm basically going to be focusing a little bit more on some of the beginner end because everyone starts somewhere. And just because they're not the corals that I keep doesn't mean they're not the corals that everyone keeps. 
So, um, so yeah, I'll, have a, I'll, I'll show you what I got in, in yesterday, and then I'll show you the clownfish. Right, now this is what I mean. I set myself a target to try and find some of the more interesting soft corals, uh, and I don't think I've done too bad of a job. These are Redactus mushrooms, and uh, then I've got a couple of Discosomas. So these are passion fruit Discosomas. These are just gonna, I'm just gonna have these as green, yellow spotted Discosomas on the website. The passion fruits are on there already, uh, but the Redactus aren't. These will be up tomorrow. But I wanted to find things that were nicely colored. They're not gonna be crazy expensive like bounce mushrooms. And I just wanted to, it, like you've been crying out for this, so, I'm trying to give you what you want. Right now, I'll show you the clownfish. They are in the tank behind me. You can actually see them there. They're, they're both of them uh, together. Now, weirdly, at the moment, it appears to have worked. If it will work a long time, I don't know. But she has accepted him. And they appear to, whether they're a couple or not, it's hard to say, but they appear to co-inhabit together. Now, the reason I decided not to put them in the angelfish tank is because I think I may have got carried away myself. I was so preoccupied to see if I could do it, I didn't stop to think if I should do it. And I will show you what I mean now. Right, as you can see, they have been living in the tank together for three weeks. Uh, he does uh, spend some time with her, not a huge amount of time, although they do sleep together, which is a good sign if a clownfish are paired up. But I think the reality is, when you look at both of them together, they look too odd to me. It looks so unnatural that it actually, it put me off the idea. So although I'm gonna leave them together in this tank, I didn't particularly want them together in the angelfish tank. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how they, how they do long term, because providing she can keep him submissive, uh, which will stop him from growing, because obviously maroon clownfish actually get quite a lot bigger than the percular clownfish usually. So, providing she can stop, um, to basically stunt his growth, he will stay male and she will stay female and then they will work as a pair. I'll be interested to see what happens long term with these two, but they were too unnatural for me to put them in, uh, in the angelfish tank together. So, um, so for now, they will remain in here. But it's, it's nice that you can finally see just how bright red, like luminous red he is. So, um, so yeah. You see the king eyes are doing well still. And I also got a little uh, jewel tang, a little tiny jewel tang for this tank, as you can see in the background, because uh, this tank doesn't have any tangs in it, so I thought that would be a nice uh, addition. Right, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Uh, have a good week, and I will see you next time.